Not so long ago, the great plains of our country were covered with grass and livestock. But gradually, as the region developed, the land was overgrazed and used too hard. Over large areas, farmers finally replaced the ranchers and began plowing the soil. At intervals during each year, the land was left bare and much of the little rain that fell ran off. Lacking water, the cultivated soil dried to powder and was unable to produce the grass or crops that would have anchored it. More and more of the dry soil began to blow and then, in a time of drought, giant dust storms became familiar spectacles. On May 12, 1934, for the first time since the white man came to America, the sun was darkened over the nation's capital by dust blown from the plains. New York, Philadelphia, and other eastern cities had the same experience. The big dust storms came only once or twice a year, but even more destructive were the steady, sweeping winds lasting many months each year and keeping the dry, powdery soil restless and unproductive. The shifting sand drifted over cropland, choked out plant life, and was a constant threat to adjoining fields. The wind sifted the soil, carried off the fine particles, and left behind the coarse, infertile sand. Some of the restless soil piled up in great drifts, all but obliterating fence rows and highways. Often it covered buildings, buried sheds and farm machinery, and even formed great drifts around homes. No land could withstand such punishment indefinitely. Without erosion control, the soil of the plains would have been impoverished incapable of producing crops and barely able to support the native grasses. But the seeming hopelessness of some of the land did not doom the region to ruin by wind erosion. Conservationists knew that rainfall on the plains, if saved, was usually sufficient to support production. With rain properly stored in the ground, grass and crops would flourish, the soil would be anchored against dust storms, and there would be an end to erosion. Over the years, farmers and ranchers came to rely on practical measures especially designed to conserve soil and water. Contour tillage, for example. This means plowing across the slope of the land on the level so that each furrow forms a little dam to hold the rain. Terraces supplement contour tillage. They are simple to build, and in the course of just a few years, they save a lot of soil and water. When properly built and maintained, terraces conserve the rainfall that furrows are unable to hold, and water that once ran to waste is held and stored in the soil. On pasture land, Ranchers turn to contour furrows to help hold back the water. The moisture that is saved helps nourish a better cover of grass. On the plains, strip cropping on the contour means planting strips of wind-resistant crops, such as sorghums, between strips of other crops. In the small grain sections, Strips of wheat are planted between strips of sorghums. On level land, strip cropping need not follow the contour, for there is little danger of the water running off. Badly damaged fields that were likely to become dangerous blow spots were taken out of cultivation and sodded with grass. A simple device on a truck did the job. In other troublesome areas, the soil was anchored against the wind by planting grasses. Where there were drifts of soil and sand, the land was first leveled 
and then stabilize with a cover of grass. More and more farmers left a good stubble on their fields after harvesting to tie down the soil, and cattle weren't allowed to graze it too closely. Quick growing trees adapted to the semi-arid climate were planted along field borders to break the sweep of the wind, and many farmers and ranchers began using trees as windbreaks for their homes. Earth dams were constructed in natural depressions to store water. Stock watering ponds, evenly distributed, brought more uniform grazing and cut down the erosion. Where conservation methods are practiced, the water is saved, the soil anchored, and crops are abundant. In contrast, where conservation methods are not used, the rainfall is not stored for productive use. The crops suffer, and the danger of soil blowing remains. The soils of the plains are as productive as any in the world. If the land is protected and rain stored in the soil, there will be no more soil blowing. The fields will bring forth bumper crops of wheat, cotton, and sorghum and with reasonable grazing, the range will bear a blanket of rich grass. Today, by working together in soil conservation districts and with technicians of the Soil Conservation Service, an ever-growing number of farmers and ranchers are ensuring the future of their land and its productivity.